Hi. Hi. Okay. Justice Jen A, Justice Obasi is our senior here. Igali Peace. Okay. I welcome everybody again to the meet. It's always a pleasure to have you. And of course, this will never be um, a success if you're not here. So I appreciate you for being around. Okay, but before I start, I always love to give honor to whom or honor is due. We have our senior in the house here, Justice Obasi, who is here to take the record of um, what we are doing today, so that those who are not around who may have the access to watch. So please, Justice, please say hi to the team. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mr. David. You're all welcome to the program. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you again, Justice. So, uh, for those who were not with us last time, uh, we did uh, something on Git. And yeah, Git, Flowchart, and Pseudocode. So, if you're not around, um, I think I dropped the link to the video in the group. You can, um, you can see it. You can perhaps ask me for it or... You can also inbox um, Justice Obas. He's our one of our media persons uh, in the in, in the community. So you can do that, and it will give you the link to the video. Okay. So let's not waste um, too much time. Let's um, go into the business of today. But somebody's hand is up. Mm -hmm. Stephen. Okay. That might be, that might have been a mistake. Okay, so today um, some persons came complaining about um, the only reason I've not hosted a session for cohort 12 is because One came i was complaining about about shell basics and permission so i thought to host a session for you today so i am i'm hoping this is going to be a resourceful session too so stephen said i was greeting there's too much bruise around me all right i'm sharing my screen does anybody have a particular question If you, have a, if you have a problem, you can just um, raise your hand and I will give you the chance to speak. The important to raise your hand is um, the middle button at the bottom of your meet screen. Okay? Anybody? If you have any questions of the OLX thing, you can ask me now before I'm going to the business of today. Okay, nobody. So, um, who is... can you see my screen it's it's blank right now but yes i can see it okay okay can yes. you still see it now oh, okay yes okay good all right thank you very much i want to believe everybody's also seeing my screen so today um shell basics and shell permission which one comes first let me see shell basics first. shell basics okay shell basics comes first so this is what will be going oh. Today is going to very be a very busy day for me because I can't find my host button that I'm supposed to use in admitting people automatically. I wish I noticed that earlier, I would have fixed it, but this is late. So I have to go into the screen of what we have and then come back to accept people. You'll be here with me with that. Okay, show basics, right? So um, first of all, let me see. I want to believe everybody have watched or read all these resources because I won't have to go about this again. I, again, I want to believe we know it. So my work here today is to guide us and um, tell us how we could do our task. And then if you have any questions concerning what whatever we are doing, then I will guide you on it too. But not to start explaining all of this. All of these are questions that you would have searched for and you get the answers you need. Right? Oh, somebody's at the door. To be very stressful. Okay, let's go into the business of today. What does ROTFM mean? Uh, ROTFM mean? Of course, read the fucking manual. And I want to believe we've read our manuals. 
Yeah. So what is a shell? This is a question I would love somebody from the meet to answer me. I want to I want to see if we truly understand what we are doing. So what is a shell? I want somebody to answer me. What is a shell? If you want to speak, please you click on this button and raise your hand and then I'll give you the chance to speak. What is a shell? Can anybody answer me? Okay, nobody. So please open your notes while I while I give you what I feel or what I understand by shell. Somebody's hand is up. Okay. Kigali, please, please speak. Um, okay. Kigali. So, so can I, you I can hear me? Hi. All right. So, from what I understand, um, a shell is a program that takes commands from your keyboard and then um, gives them to your operating system to work on. Like, I don't know if that's like the whole okay. definition, okay, but yeah. Okay, that's a very precise meaning of um, shell. Yeah, that works. That works. Thank you for that. That works. So a shell is a program, as she said, that runs within our terminal. It serves in executing our programs. That is basically what a shell is. And if you're asking, what is then the difference between a terminal and a shell? Because both of them are almost used interchangeably. Now, a terminal is a um, is an interface. It, a text-based interface that provides access to um, the underlying operating system. That is with a terminal, you can uh, interact with your operating system directly. That is what a terminal is. Uh, it allows us, uh, users us to interact with the operating system using text commands, like your LS, your CD, and then to display the result of those commands on the screen. What going by display? When you enter a particular command and you hit enter whatsoever, or just doing a particular task you wanted it to do. So that is what a terminal is. And a shell, in the other hand, is a program that runs within the... You read it. Very, very explanatory. You just copy it and look for the answers. Okay, so let's go into the tax. Now, let's first start with our requirement as usual. Allowed editors are VI, Vim, and Emacs. I believe most of us are always using VI and Vim because they are simple to use. And then all your script will be tested on Ubuntu, of, of course. All your script should be exactly two lines. Yeah, so we should take note of this. It should be exactly two lines. All your files should end with a new line, which means basically three lines, right? But the last line is empty. The first line of all your files should be exactly Sheban. We, we've known this all, already because I believe we've read. So the first, in your three lines, it should be the first thing in all your scripting. And then whatever command you are writing should be the next. And then the question on this, why are we always putting this as the first thing? Okay, so a readme at the root of the repository, containing the description of the repository, and then a readme at the root of the folder of this project. Okay, which means at the root of your repo, you should have a written, and at the root of your uh, ticks, which are these, these, and these. Okay, all your scripts uh, must be executable. To make your file exec executable, use the chmod, the change mode command. Okay, we'll see how we we'll do that. But let me accept some persons. I told us today I can't find the button to automatically allow people in the meet. So I have to be doing that automatically. Sorry, um, manually. Okay, so let's go into the business of today. So the first tag here, having understood what a, um, a shell is and a terminal is, so we can uh, move into this. Now, what is a script? A script, just like the name, a script, like writing notes. But in this... series of commands inside a particular file or something and then when it, when you execute it it's um, going to execute execute the commands inside of that file okay let's say for example i want to 
um, maybe every time I'm always changing a directories. And then when I change the directory, I list all the files instead of, let me open my git bash so that you can get an understanding of what I'm saying. Let's say, for example, I'm always changing directories. And then whenever I change the directory, um, Um, store those commands instead of those files. And then whenever I run that particular um, executable file of that, it's going to perform that task for me automatically. That is what a shell script is. Yeah. So let me navigate into our folder. If you were here with us last time, you know that we have a folder. CD, I can't remember where it is exactly, but CD should be here. It is here, then it is here. Let's assume this is my um, terminal now. Let's say my web time. So the first thing I want to do is to enter into root for your own. You have to add slack. This is just for practice purposes. So I'll just ls to see what is inside. So we have this, 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 this. And that, okay, so now we are working on system engineering DevOps. So I'll just create a new directory inside of that. Okay, so uh, MKDIR, I believe we already know how to create a directory. So I'll cd into that directory, and then I might, I might want to create a readme file, right? Echo, uh, this is my readme file, and then I'll take it to readme.markdown. Yeah, let's we have it now. And then I'm going to create a directory, another directory. Okay, mkdir. And we will name it shell basics. So let's assume I clone this from my GitHub, right? Let's just assume that. So, and now I have another directory named shell basics. Instead of this directory, I'm supposed to have another readme file. And I'll say, leave me. I'm just trying to follow the processes we need to have here. So now the first file here is what is let's start. Let me just copy. So now the task says write a script. Is this? Write a script that prints the absolute path name of the current working directory. Okay. Now if you see here, I scored 70.83. Now I scored 17.83 not because I didn't get this right, but because the checker then was giving issues. So some persons have always come and like complain they've done something right and then it's still giving them error. In such cases, please, I want to tell you, sometimes give your checker some space. So many persons are trying to access it at that time. Yeah, you're not the only person trying to use it. Cohort five, six, two, twelve are, are, are trying to use it. So it may lag at times. So you just give it some time and come back and try to do your work again, it might work. Then I gave it the, the correct um, command for it, which was PWD, right? But it was giving me error. What did I do? I had to leave it. I tried everything I could do, but it didn't work. I had to leave it. And then I, I missed it, um, our deadline. That was why I got this. And then the next day, I tried PWD again, and then it worked. So you see how frustrating that could be. So sometimes just leave it like that and come back to it. So this says, write a script that prints the absolute path name of the current working directory. And we know the command to print the, uh, the um, current working directory is PWD. Following our, our instruction says the first line should be, so what, first of all, you need to open your file with the VI or whatever. But you could decide to use this function, the cat function, and then you cut it. I believe we've learned what this is. So when I use cat and this, I'm trying to write into this file. But in this case, I'm not using a text editor. I'm just using my terminal. So if I hit enter, this is my first line now. And our first line is supposed to contain shaban, right? Which is hash, exclamation, slash, bin, slash, bash. Now, let me also tell us that this is not the only um, shell script you could use. There are other ones expect us to do that. So the command to print um, the working directory is PWD. Then it must, it must, so I hit enter again. 
to exit this place, I say control D, then I've exited that. So if I LX now, see I have zero current working directory. And then they said our file should be executable. Yeah, so how do you make a file executable? We use the change mode command. CHMO stands for change mode. Now there are different ways you could you could give permission to a file, which is what we will do in the next um, class, but since it's still in this same session. So how does I will explain to us later, but for this case, U stands for user plus the the, um, the particular um permission you want to give, which is executable in this case, and that is X. And then the file name you are trying to uh, give permission to, and then you hit enter, and that is done. You are done with that particular tax. Okay. So last time I explained to us that green means the file is executable, executable, right? No, not executable. It is um, a file. And then no, that's not what I told us last time. This is my own um, colors. Still have people. Sorry. Okay. So let's move forward. So right now this is executable, right? I could, I could execute this using um, shell script. Um, and then I'll say, it. you see that? So it's printed the current working directory. So if I should do PWD, see, it's doing exact same thing. So that is what shell scripting is all about. Just give writing particular commands inside of a file. And then every time you execute it, it helps you in doing that particular task. This is what they normally use in automations. Okay, let's say as a software engineer, you, you do a, a, a lot of things at the same time. So instead of doing that all the time, you could just write your own script and then it, it will do the work for you. It always come in handy. So this one says display the content list of your current working directory. I shouldn't even be explaining it, right? Because we already know the command, which is ls. What would be using? So I'll just play my screen. Okay. So ls. So I'll just let me now let me use vi now. Vi and this. Copy this. And it opens up. Um, just hold on. Now this is VI, right? So um, our first line should be our Shaban. Okay, I will go into my insert mode with I. Then Shaban is I hit enter, and then the command should be ls to list all files. Then enter a new line, and then to exit this, you escape to exit the command mode, and then. Um, colon WQ to exit and save. Now, by LS, we have it right now to make it executable. We do U plus X, and then I paste it, I hit enter. Now, that particular task is done. If I want to execute it. Uh, what was the name again? I just paste it. Hit enter. You see, it list, listed. Now, if I do LS, it works the same way. Listed the files we have in this particular um, directory that we are in. So that is what shell scripting is all about. So in this case, let me just go through this. Write a script that changes the working directory to the user's home directory. If you have read your notes, if you have read your notes, of course, you should know how to do that. So let me just practicalize that. If I say CD and then I hit enter, it takes me back to my um, to my um, home directory. This was where I came from, right? So this is the command. This is what you should write inside of your file here. and your checker will check you correct. Uh, I have to go back to where I was. Very long journey. CD cohort 12. CD right? System. Okay, CD root. And CD system. Okay, now we are here. CD 0x0. Okay, now we are here. So that is that for, for this. I believe I don't need to go over each of them again, but I'll just give us a chance now to ask questions concerning this particular project. Is there anything we are still finding difficult? So I can explain it now for us. Any questions? Any questions now you can ask? Her. Okay, Kigali, please. Okay, ask your question. Um, hi, so, hi, can you hear me? Hi, Gale. Yeah, I, I can um, hear you very well. Okay, so this is not related to questions. It's on, um, so the cat command that you used to write in, 
I didn't catch how you said you exit that word. So when you say cat and then that greater than and then file name that allows you to write in without using the editor, how do you exit? Okay, how do I exit? Okay, I'll do that again. Let's say, okay. let's say I want to write in, into a file name um, piece. Um, I'll just look at the anchor bracket then piece, which is my file name. I hit enter. Right, what do I want to write? Let's say I want to write um, Kigali. Kigali, 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 right? Then a new line to exit, control D. Control, if you are on, 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 on MacBook, still control D, don't use command D. So Windows, control D, and then you exit. All right, thank you. So do you understand now? You're welcome. Yes, thank you. All right. So any other question concerning this project? If you have any question at all, you can ask now. To ask your question, OK, someone's hand is up. Who is that? OK, Riz Jacob, please ask your question. Riz, ask your question. Your mic might be mute, so you might want to unmute yourself so I can hear you. Can you hear me now? OK, I can hear you now. OK, so I'm saying I was doing the share basic task. So okay. I got I got uh, stuck on the Emacs this thing, and I was finding it difficult to leave there. Okay, Emacs Emacs what? On the Emacs uh, terminal. You mean Emacs as an uh, editor? Yes. Yes, on the web terminal, they told us to to go to the Emacs terminal and write some some stuff. So after I was done there, I was finding it difficult to leave there. Okay, please, which of the tasks is that so that I can check out the question? Um, share basics, tag zero. Shell basics, tag zero. This is shell basics, if I'm, if I'm correct, shell basics. And yes. then this is tag zero. Yeah. Write a script that prints the absolute path name of the current working directory, which is what we did. Okay. I guess I didn't come on time. Okay, 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 okay. Didn't you meet us on this? No, I met okay, you when okay. you were Okay, okay. Um, okay, but um, you said you were stuck on it. I want to understand where exactly you were stuck. What was exactly the problem? Like, where we are supposed to, after writing the, um, the beam bus stuff. Yes. So, um, he told us to like, and press control, control X and C to exit. But after I was doing like, oh. it didn't work. Okay, 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 okay. I think I I get you now. Okay, um, that means we're writing using Emacs as a text editor. That was why you have you were having that issue. Okay, on my Git yes. I don't I don't have Emacs installed, so I can't use Emacs. But I advise you use VI because it's simpler to use. Instead of Emacs, Emacs has a lot of commands you need to familiarize your, your, yourself with. So VI okay. is a good um, choice. So to use VI, just like Emacs, you write Emacs and the file name. In um, um, in VI, so you, have, you write VI and then your file name. Let's say, for example, my file name is um, zero current working directory, right? You hit enter. And then it opens up this. Then to write inside of it, you, you press I to enter ins inside your insert mode. If you check here, I'm now in my insert mode. Now I can write whatever I want to write. Then after writing that, you want to ex um, exit your insert mode to be able to use your command. You click on escape. When I click on escape, you see the insert has, has disappeared. Now to exit and save, you use um, colon WQ. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, that's what it's showing there, colon WQ. You hit enter. Then the okay. file is saved. Okay, then okay. then you can you can set the permission for you. We see here mod u plus x, and then zero your file name. Then you hit enter. Then your task okay. is done. That is just that. Okay. okay thank so, you. So you're welcome. So that's one way of doing it with using a text editor. Now I could still do it using my um my 
terminal with the cat function. So it will be cat, the anchor bracket, and then my file name, which is zero dash. Well, let me not um, do that. Okay, let me use um, Jacob. Yes, I want to write into Jacob as a file name. Hit enter. Then I write uh, my Shaban as my first line in uh, bash. I, then I hit enter. I write my command, whatever my command is, and then I hit the new line to exit it. Control B, exit it. For LS now, you see Jacob. Jacob. Then if I cut Jacob, you see that's what is inside. So you set you set your your mode for it, and then you say Jacob. And that is that. So that's the, the two ways of using using a text editor and also using your terminal to edit your file. Okay. okay. All right. You're welcome. Okay. So does any other person have questions concerning shell basics? Wherever you are finding it difficult, if, even if it includes your pushing, whatever it is, you can ask your question now before I go into shell permissions. Any okay. Okay, Gali, please. Please speak. Um, could you please go over the last task 19, the advanced task, the, the one about the magic file? I don't quite understand oh. that one. Okay, the magic file. Okay, can I still remember how to do that? Hold on, hold on. I think I, I have the command written somewhere. Okay. Hold on, let me check. I see someone also asked about it, even. Okay. Just hold on, let me check for the command. I wrote it somewhere. It was a terrible task. It took me, it took me like like a whole day to actually do it. And that was after asking questions upon questions. So if I can't find the command right now, then I will just hold on. Then later on, somebody will remind me in the group, and then I will look for it for you. Uh, I, I can't find it right now. Can't find it right now. But after now, remind me, I'll make a note on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, That's this night, just remind me, I'll make it, I'll make a note on it and post it in the group. Okay. Right. Okay. So um Jen A, Jen A, please ask your question. Hello. Oh, her hand is down already. Okay, hello. Um I want to ask what's the difference between C D, C D hyphen and C D tilde. Sorry? What's the difference between CD, CD hyphen, and then CD tilde? CD hyphen, like this? CD and then CD tilde. Okay. Um, the one with the, the tilde will take you to your home directory. That is the one with the tilde here. Takes you to your home directory. It's the same thing as you writing just CD and, you, and then you hit enter. Okay, it takes you to your home. Then the other one is the same thing as PWD. Okay, you understand me now? The other one I've seen the normal CD without any hyphen or tilde. Okay, the, this one, this one uh -huh. takes you to your to your home directory. Let's say, for example, I am in my C, and then I go into my git. Then if I use just CD. And then I hit enter. It's taking me back to my home where I started oh. from. Okay? Yes. Okay. Now, that is also the, the same thing with... Uh, let me go back here. That is also the same thing with you um, using this. You hit enter. It takes you back to your home. So okay. they, are both, they are both doing the same thing. Now, we also have... Now, this. Uh, hit enter. Now, CD with hyphen print your current working directory like this oh okay it's the same thing as using pwd okay, okay. 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 all right thank you you're welcome so any other person any question at all let's just attend to it now before i go into the permissions okay no more questions so i believe we can now write shell scripts yeah it's coming it comes in handy when you start doing so many things at the same time then Symbolic link. Okay, you're asking what you're asking what the symbolic link is, or oh, I didn't get that right. You can okay, okay. I'll just go back over, over that again. So we have symbolic link and hat link, right? Now a symbolic link 
uh, you can also call it a soft link, right? Or sim link. Yeah, I remember that. Is um is a kind of file too that acts like uh, let's say a reference to a particular file. Okay, or a directory. You know, um, when you have hard links, when when you make a change to a hard link, it affects the main file. Now, a hard link is like a copy of the main file. So whenever you make any change to that uh, file, it, it also affects the original. Now, a soft link or a symbolic link in this case is, is the opposite of it, okay? Now, when you make a change to a symbolic link, it doesn't affect the main file. That is how a symbolic link works and also a hard link. I hope you understand that. A symbolic link is just um, a special file that acts like a, a reference to another file. Please, your mic is, is, is on. Let me mute your mic. Excuse me. I'm trying to mute some person's mic. Okay, reference to another file elsewhere, right? Yes. Yes. That is what a symbolic link on it. Have link please. I don't know why you ask that perhaps you want to be using it, but whatever it is, you can always ask me anything and then work on it. So I'll move, I'll, I'll be moving into shell uh, message there. Okay, somebody said all right. Please let me mute your mic. This is kind of distracting me. So I'm moving into shell permission. This was one of my most interesting topics in shell. I spent some time some time on it, so I enjoyed it. So you are needed to know all of this, or not to know all of this, but you should be familiar with all of this as far as you are going into the shell permission thing. So I believe we've read all of this. I can't go over it again because these are things you can have easily just go on, go, go and check. What do the commands do? This one is change mode, this one is sudo, this one kind of acts like sudo. But okay, I think let me just tell us what this does. Okay, so chmod, which is change mode, modify the file access. If the file access writes, yeah, that means you, you can change who can write to a file, who can um, read the file, something like that, and who can execute it. That is what this does. Now, the sudo temporarily makes a user um, a super user. So let's say I am the owner of a particular directory or file or something like that, and then I use sudo to give you a permission. That means I'm that moment I'm making you a super user that you can do anything at all, even to delete whatever I couldn't delete that is what this does and then the su command does the same thing just temporarily makes you the super command and um, super user yeah then the um chow which is change the ownership uh basically makes um you can change the ownership of a particular file let's say um john is the owner of this i could change the uh, the owner of that file to maybe jacob that is what this does change oh. then change group I change the files group ownership that is just what they do. There's no big thing there. Linux file permissions. I believe we've read all of this. So let's just go into the business of the day. So my name is Betty. Write a script that switches the current user to user Betty. I shouldn't even be explaining that because the answer is already in the um, in, in the question. So um, let me go back to. I want I want to explain some of the things in um, in the permissions. It will help us understand more. Okay, so I'm not going to be creating anything here. Or oh, let me just create something. So please, you stick, just stick around. So I'm going to be explaining uh, shell permission in a way we understand. So I'll see into it. Okay, so now I'm, I'm in the... Uh, um, shell permission uh, directory or something like that. Now, file, per, um, file permissions. Let me see. Let me start from the file permission. Now, file, file permissions on Linux, on, on Linux systems, uh, means that you assign a particular file or a particular owner the right to do anything at all. Uh, particular owner, your members of the group to do anything at all to, to that particular file or a directory. Now, to see the list of um, permissions in a particular file, that means to see who, let me go back to, um, what was the name again? CD 0x0, 
is not here. So can you check? Okay. I was supposed to see the into LX system engineering GearBox. So this was where I was supposed to make that directory. Okay, less. Okay, so um let me see the into zero x zero zero. Now to see the list of all the permissions to a particular file, you could do ls dash l. Now follow me. Um now this first dash tells us what kind of file is this. It means the dash here, this first first thing you're seeing here, tells us what kind of file this is. Dash here means it is a regular file. Right? If it was D, D means it is a directory. Let me show us that. So let me create a directory here and name it someone's name. Who asked me a question? Uh, please, please ask me a question. Please cannot, cannot create directory, please. File exists. Okay, we already have peace as a file. Okay, I'll create Jen. Jen, Jen ask a question. Okay, so now I've created a directory. Now I'm going to do ls-l. Now, Jen, if you look at this place here, we have D here. So D means it is a directory, while dash means it is a file, that is our regular files, right? That's the first thing we should know. Now, after that, we have the first three things here, which is arrow WX. Now, we have another arrow dash X, arrow dash X. Now, let me explain that. All of that, the first three is one, is for one person. The next three is for one person. The next three is for one person. Now, the first three is for the user. The user could be you. Yeah, that is permission for the file owner. Okay, let me say the file owner here in that case. Now, the next three is for the group owners. And the last three is for any other persons, any other users that you may have. Okay. Now, arrow means write. What does write mean is that you can edit the file, you can modify it. Sorry, arrow means read. What does read means you can actually see the contents of the file. And W means write. You can edit the file, modify, do whatever you want to do. X means you can um, execute the file. Like when we executed our, our shell script, then, yeah, that is what X does. Now, it's the same thing for the others. Now, this first one is for the user, which means user have the permission to read, the write, to write and execute the file. Now, whenever you see dash in a position where you're supposed to have something, it means you, that person does not have a permission to do that particular thing. So in this case, we have arrow here, which means um, the group the group owners now can read this particular file. And then we have dash here in the place of write, which means they can't write into the file. That means they cannot edit it. Now we have X. That means they can execute the file. And then for other users, they can read, but they can't write, but they can execute. That is what that means there. Okay. So I hope we understand that perfectly. Now, that's the first way of, um, of us um, giving permission. So let's say I want to give, um, let me clear the screen and ls l again. Now, let's not talk about the tax yet. Let's understand how this works. Now, let's say I want to give um, write permission to, uh, to um, the first file here, write. How do we do that? So since it is a group, we say chmod, right? And then G, we use G for that. Then G plus, what are we trying to do? Arrow, which that hit enter, right? So I'm going to ls dash L again. That didn't come out. Okay, that didn't come out. Group. Okay, let me look for another way we could do it. We could say, um, um, let me use six, read and write. Okay, let me use six. So say, uh, I'm looking for a simpler way I could do it so we could understand. I want to use numbers in this case. Okay, so let me say CHMOD 764 and 0. I will explain this in a minute. So LS dash L. If this doesn't work, then it's from my own end. Okay, it's from my own end. This is supposed to, to work. This first one is supposed to work and this is supposed to work. So this is from my own end. So this is how you give a particular permission to a particular file. It, this is the user. So if I'm to give a permission to the user, of course, we already know it's U plus the permission. If it is a group, G plus the permission. If it is um, other users, you could use O. Yeah, you could use, you could use O and it works. Okay. Order, yeah. 
could, you could just go. Or if you want to give it for everybody, you could just do A plus, let's say, uh, right. Yeah, right. And then zero dash this. That will give for everybody. Let me see if that works. Oh, it didn't work. Then it's from my own end. Let's not concentrate on that. But you could go on to practice that too, and you see it. So that works. So that's how you give permission to a particular user group or other users or everybody at once using A. Okay, that is us using the letters, right, to give the permissions. Now we could also give permissions using numbers. Yeah. So let me just open a note, my notepad and see how I can explain that to us. Uh, where can I do this? Okay, let me create a new file. So um, I'll start from no, number zero. So number zero, number zero stands for no permission. Okay, no permission. Now I want to show us how we can calculate this in a simpler file format. So follow me till the end. Number one means, number one means execute. Execute, yep. Execute. Number two means um, write. Write. Number three means execute plus write. And it's hard remembering all these things. Write. Execute plus write. Which means if I use three, I will give the mission of executing and writing at the same time. Then number four was only read. Yeah, only read. So we have five. Number five is both read and execute. Read plus execute. Then we have number six. We're almost done. Number six is read and write. So it's just like a pattern. You just follow it. You don't need to memorize all this. I will show you how you could actually know it. So number seven is everything you can think of. Read plus write plus um, execute. So that is all the numbers, right? So how does this work? Um, zero is no permission, which means if I give a particular person zero, it means I'm not giving you any permission at all. Let's say, for example, I want to change um, the mode of the group, and I don't want to give them any permission at all. Okay, how do I do that? You could say, um, I could say uh, for group, I want, I want a simpler way of doing it. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, we'll just walk it over. So, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me look for a file here. Let me look for a file. I wrote something. I want to show us a very simpler way of doing it. Please hold on. Okay. Okay. I think we just need to work with this. Okay. So um, the first number we need to write stands for um, the group. Sorry, the user. Then the next number is for you know the permissions how it works on the terminal here. So I'll just ls l. Now the first three here stands for the user. The next three stands for the group, and the third um, three stands for other users. So let's say I am doing this. I want to change the permission of, let's say, that of the group to to only read the file and they don't do any other thing, right? And then for the user, I want to give them. I want to give the user um, all the permissions, right? So all the permissions here are uh, on here, read plus, write plus, execute. It has the number seven, right? So I could say seven. And then afterwards, the next group, the next um, options here is for the user. So let's say I want to, sorry, for the group. Let's say I want to give the group only read permission. So I could give it four. And then for the other users, let's say I want to give them only 
write or let's say another um read i will them for and then my file name so this is how the numbers worked i'll show us how we could calculate this and understand it very well so let's go back to the terminal so let's say what file do i have here i have zero current working directory so let's say i want to give my zero current working directory i want to give myself all the permission i want to give others only read and then the group and others only read then I could say zero that is hit enter. That will work. So I would say ls dot l. So you see here, you see here that I gave it only the read permission, right? So I, they already have read permission. So it's still open here. So let me try to give them write permission. Then I give myself seven. Write is two. Give them only two, two, and then I say zero dash. If this doesn't work here, please try it on your own end. It should work. It doesn't work. Try it on your own end. It works. Okay? This is Git bash, not like a native Linux terminal. Okay, so you can try that on your own side. So the question now is, um, how do you memorize all of this? And say, okay, I want to carry all these numbers in my head to know which is read plus execute, read plus write. You don't need to do that. Now, um, there's a formula I'm going to give us now. Um, okay, let's do it like this. I wonder I'm going to write this for us to really, really see. So I'll hit enter and go to a new file. So we have rowx, right? And then I have rowx for the next. I have rowx, which is in this world. So this is for user, this is for group, and this is for others. we're well, we going to understand it very well That's me. okay so this is permission for the user the group and the others right now arrow we know that arrow is what read read is four right four and then to write to write is two and then execute is usually one right we we'll go to the next one write four two one oh, I thought that was going to skip mm. You go to the next one and write four two one now for just follow me accordingly now if you add all of this like four plus two plus one what does it give you it gives you seven let me keep it in the middle it gives you seven and then i go again it gives you seven again it gives you seven right so this is basically how you can easily remember how to give these permissions with using numbers Remembering that everything you just need is four to one, okay? And and of course, we already know that it is ROWX, okay? So if you are looking to give all the permissions, it is seven, okay? So if I want to give only permissions for only read plus write, read plus, read plus write, that means I'm going to say four plus two, which is six here. So let's say, let's make it practical here. So I want to give, my file name is 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 peace. My file name is peace, and I want to give um, the user all the permissions. All, all permissions in this case is four plus two plus one. That's I want to give all these permissions. Four plus two plus one, which is seven. So I've given myself seven. And then for the uh, for the um, group, I want to give them only let's say read read and execute. That's the read and execute. And in this case, read and execute. I will just add four plus two, which is six. Now, if you look at the number here, sorry, read and execute, that is four plus one. If you look at the number here, it is five to read and execute. So I'll give five. And then for the other user, I don't want to give them any permission at all, which is, okay, let me just give them only execute. So execute in this case is one. If you look at here, it's one. I give it one. And then I give it my file name, which is this. So this is like the simpler way of you remembering this. Okay, but I highly recommend you using the alphabet where so you just have to do plus X plus W plus R. But if it is composed that you use the numbers, then this is how you remember this using this number. Just remember that 421, okay? And that is that stands for read, write, and execute. Then which other permission you want to give? You just need to add the numbers. If you want to give only read and execute four plus one. If you look at this place, read and execute is five. Four plus one is five. So that's just how that works. 
I hope we understand this. I had to look into this so that I, I will, I will, uh, I will give us this. It helps. You could use it to do whatever I want to do. So before, uh oh, so before I go on to say, um, let me solve some of the tasks. Do we have any questions at all concerning what I've just explained? Any questions at all concerning shell permissions? Is there where you are finding it difficult in shell permissions? Anybody? Okay, which means we understood what I was explaining, right? Let me check the messages. So I won't miss up. Yeah, okay, there's no message. So I'll just go back to solving some of the tasks you might have. So this says, create a script that switches the current user to the user, Betty. So which means in this case, we, we already have the user Betty on our system, right? We just need to switch the, the current user now to Betty. It just means it's just like giving the overall power to Betty. Let's say we have Kigali, we have Jane, we have Jacob as the users here. And then we want to give the super user the overall um, power to, uh, let's say, Jane. So all we need to do is to do these tags, right? Now let's see how we can do that. So let me see the files I have here first. Okay, let me create this. So I will say um, I could still use my cat function and then I just paste this. And then, of course, the first line should be shabang. shabang. That's fine. Then the next line should be my, um, my, this, my, my code now. So what command do we use in doing that to change? I told us earlier that SU stands for temporarily becoming the super user. That is making the, that particular person a super user. So in this case, we could use SU, right? So I will say SU, and the name of the um, user is Betty. So I'll just say Betty, and then end with a new line. Seven. Okay. Then other I could the other ones I could say five five, and then my file name is my file name is what zero dash. Zero dash I, I hit enter. That tax is done. You could, could use the numbers too. It works. So if I do ls dash l, you see the user have the permission of read, write, and execute. Okay. Then the other ones have five. What was five again? Read and execute. So let's see. Do we have read and execute? Read and execute. Yeah, we have read and execute. So that is that for that particular tax. Just use that particular command. So let's check another one. This one says, um, write a script that prints the effective username of the current user. Do I even need to go to go over that? That's simple enough. Okay, I need to. I need to. Yeah, I need to. Um, let me first of all create the file. We need to go over this. Copy. So I will say, in this case, let me use my, my VI. Uh -oh. Use my VI for those who may not understand what's going on. Okay, so I enter into my insert mode. The first thing I want to do is my shebang. So what command do we what command do you use in um, printing the effective username of the current user? That's just to print the username of the current user. Let me exit out of this first. Let me exit out of this. Now, the command we use for this, if you have read, if you have read, now there's a function called ID. That is for the ID, to print the ID of a particular file, right? Now, we are asked to print the, the username of the current user. So in this case, what do I do? I'm going to use my U function and then my end function to get the, um, the current working directory, I mean, and then to also get the username, I use my U L my end function. But then, you know how this works. Um, you know what alias mean. So in this case, I'm going to use my dash u, dash n, hit enter, administrator. So I am, for me, my the name, my, my username on this is administrator. I haven't changed this. Okay. But in yours, it would be your name based on what you set. So this is the command you use in checking 
um, the username of the current user. Okay? okay. This whole thing is more understandable if you're using Linux because Linux, like, they take all these things very seriously. You know how it is. You have to work with a terminal. Use your hands in working. So I'll go back to, what, what was the file name again? One. Seriously, I hate writing. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'll just go ahead to uh, put my ID dash u dash n dash n. Hit enter to enter into a new line and then I escape. Now, if you have studied broadly, you, you will understand how all, all these things work. So I hope we understood that. Okay, now write a script that prints all the groups. The current user is part of all the groups. The current user is part of that's simple enough. It's just the command groups, then you hit enter. Groups cannot find name for group ID. This is that's because there's no group here, right? Yours too, you may not have any group, but you are working in, on a professional um, system, okay, where you have different users using um, that particular um, PC, okay, so you could see this but for now you can't see it but that's the command for this just um, groups i think yes to print the yeah that's the command for that so let's go and that changes the honor of the file hello to the user betty we know how to do that right just to change the honors the on okay let me go that because i told us what ch chon meant that time chon means you change the ownership of this file uh, to this other person Okay, so in this case, since it is shell scripting, you just write that particular thing inside of that file. So it's easy enough. If you know the command, you just need to write it inside of the file. So I'll say cat uh, this. And then, of course, and I hated to write this. You know that you could also write a shell script that could help you to write this inside of the new file names every time you run it. Of course, you should look that out. So CHO, change the ownership of the file. So write the script that changes the owner of the file, hello to the user, Betty. So after you do this, the next thing you want to write is the, is the name of the person you're trying to change the ownership to. In this case, it's Betty, right? And then your file name, which is hello, enter a new line, then I exit. Then I change my uh, CHO mode, my mode, U plus X. Remember, you could also use numbers to do it. What is that found in here? And then we are done with this. So this is basically that for shell permission. I believe I've been able to explain a few things here to help us understand um, shell permissions. Now, there are other things we, we could um, dig deep in knowing. Uh, that includes the ways to use all these our commands. We have the absolute mode, which includes the numeric and octal, which is like the numbers we've dealt with. And then we have the symbolic mode. Right, the symbolic mode, you know, you make your use of mathematical symbols, which is uh, plus, minus, equals to. Yeah, yeah, I think. It's been a while I, I did that. So uh, the absolute mode is basically what, what we do using the 0 to 7. While the symbolic mode, you have to use the u plus x, u plus that. So those are the two of them. Now there's another one, but I can't remember the name. Yeah, I can't remember the name. But it was like the combination of the both of them. So I didn't bother like, going in depth. With it. So that is that for shell basics and then shell permissions. Does anybody have a question or a challenge concerning any of these two topics that we just completed now? So this is where I can answer your question. Dave, can we have a record of decision on YouTube perhaps, please? Yes, yes. I told us that this is recorded. Our media team, we have a media team. So they are, they are presently available here and they are recording the, um, the whole thing now. So yes, you have it. We were not restricted to using only eight characters in our command. Can we also use sudo betty instead of su betty? Sudo betty, yes. They are basically doing the same thing, but there's a thin line be between the both of them. They are doing the same thing. Now, this su gives you the super user, but to an extent, yes, to an extent. Now, remember, we have some system configurations in our system, and then you need a particular kind of power to be able to delete a system configuration. Now, you can do that with SU. Yes. Now, with sudo, you can do that. 
So your tax may not, or they, you may not have worked with this because this is like the being a God. Yeah, this is like being a God. But as you, you know, like under God, so you won't be able to do a particular thing except God says, okay, do it. And so that's the difference between the both of them. But they are almost the same thing, but the thin line is this cannot delete, um, this cannot handle system configuration. Like you have the power for everything, but can't enter into that place. But this, you can do whatever you want. So, um, particularly, please, I hope you will understand that. Someone said, Dave, I just joined. Please, where will the YouTube link be posted? Okay, I'll give it to be posted in the group. All the groups of Hot 12 that have here. Kigali, please, ask your question. Um, oh yeah, firstly, I understand the difference. Thank you. Um, another thing I wanted to ask is there, you know, how there's like usually like cheat sheets for your VI commands and Emacs. Yeah. Is there a similar thing for like the permissions? Because most of the permissions, like it's really hard to um, find them, like when you Google and stuff. Okay. But is okay. there like a sheet that has like a summarized list? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, they might be. They might. Yeah, there's it. Um, there's. I think I have a note where um, we have that. Yeah, I think I think I have a note on that. But there's a library. I told us last time. There's a library where I practically I have all the uh, all all the books we may need in in this program. Okay, so I have some of the books that have shell stuffs inside. So there you could have you could see all the permissions you may need. Yes, I have that. So I told us I, I dropped a link to the library last time, but I'm not sure most of us used it. But if after now someone can remind me, then I'll post the link to the library again. And then you can see all sorts of books. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, do we have any other questions or a challenge concerning these two projects? Anything at all you're having issues with? This is where we could solve it. Any issues at all? We could handle it right now. Anybody? Or we are good with from zero to the advanced tasks. Okay, that's very good. I'm I'm actually happy to see that we are good on all tasks. That's good. Okay, so what I will tell us today is. Let us not um, focus on the task. Yeah, don't focus to meet your deadline. Okay, the program is designed in a way that even if you finish up all your projects on third deadline, you will still meet um, the cutoff mark. Yeah, you will still do that. So the essence of of the uh, of the three deadlines is the first that they don't they don't uh, really expect you to meet up with the first deadline. They want you to use that to familiarize yourself with the concepts to read and understand. Then the second deadline, that is when you can start doing the practical works to start trying if you can actually solve this particular task. And then the third deadline, you can take your time to solve this thing. So don't always rush into your task. Try to understand the concept. How, how, how does this work? Why is this happening when I use it like this? What if I do it like this? Will it still work? So if you ask, try doing that. Don't just jump into, into the task. Okay. Then when you've understood the concept, then you can then move into the tax and say, okay, let me try this out. Okay, sometimes I miss the deadlines too. Most of the times I miss the deadline, I fall into the third deadline. Not because I want to, but because just me studying when I, I finally understand this is when I'm able to do. So don't always rush to meet up with this course because your 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 peers are, are, are posting their scores like 100%, 200%. Doesn't mean they're actually doing well. Some of them may just be following up and copying the, the codes, but not actually understanding. So take your time to understand. This is what is going to help you later on. Believe me, I'm, I'm telling you this out of experience. So take your time to understand the concept. And then in the future, you you see how this works. You enjoy, When you start doing C, you really understand that, yeah, deadlines does not actually matter. All I need to do is to understand what I am doing. Believe me, you see this. Okay, so um, I don't know. I believe I've covered all the areas that I should have covered. Okay, so if people have any other questions, you can drop it in the group and tag me. If you don't tag me, believe me, I'm not going to see your questions because I have other things I'm doing. So I can't come into the group and start reading all the text messages. Okay, so what you could do is whenever you want to ask a question, you could tag me with it. Then I'll receive a notification. I will check. Okay, this is why I have not, I have not held a session since because... I've not really seen a question. Nobody has tagged. So I felt, okay, everybody's doing well. So it was yesterday when I had like four persons in my inbox and were like, what's going on? I don't really understand. It's okay. I was like, okay, today I will make a chance for this. 
So please, if you have a question or anything, you could inbox me too. Yeah, that's fine. You could post in the group in case other people want to. Also, uh, are having the same issues. Okay, Kigali, please, you could ask a question. I will say what you want to say. Um, not a question. You just said I should remind you about the magic file. Um, okay, okay, oh, okay. After uh, our session, please remind me on. Oh, on, on the side. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. Justice Obasi, please. You you want to say something? Yes, uh, Mr. David, I want to say mm -hmm. something quickly. Please, to okay. the house, I want to encourage you all to please try to be asking your questions or say whatever you want to. Because um, no one knows it all. Okay? At the end of the program, we expect you to make progress. So that's why Mr. David is here teaching and doing all these stuff. So I believe all this time he asks, is there any question? No one asks a question. That doesn't mean that all of you have understood it, but probably you are afraid to answer your questions or to ask your questions. So please try to come up in that way. And another thing is, please, you guys should try to have someone you can ask questions offline, of the meeting time. Probably a senior um, student or someone else you know. Try to have people that you can ask questions while you are solving your tasks. Because not all questions you can get on Google or online. Some answers you get them from real people who you need who need to understand your real needs and questions. So this is just what I want to ask. Okay, okay, I appreciate that a lot, Mr. Justice. Man, that was a lot. So I hope we've heard what you have said. What you have said is the real deal. If you have any questions, please always try to ask. Don't be ashamed or or scared to ask. Now this is the problem we have that. We have questions, but we don't ask. We are afraid to ask. And then we try to solve these things ourselves. And at the end, we cannot do it. And then we still come back to ask. And at this time, we've, we've, we've wasted enough time that we would have used to learn um, other things. So please, whenever you have a question, don't struggle it. Ask. Ask. Don't be scared to ask. Me, I ask questions a lot. Like each of my projects, I could ask like four other persons. And I could have a session with them personally to like discuss the whole thing. So please don't be scared to ask. That is something I learned. I learned from the beginning of LLFs. Like they were encouraging me to always ask questions. So I got used to it. And now I can ask anybody questions. So please always ask your questions. Don't be scared. Just like Mr. Yeah, Justice said. Uh, you also need to have somebody you could relate with. Okay. Not all questions you could actually see um on Google. That's true. Even if you see it, you may not really get like they yeah, are explaining what you, you're asking, but then it's not related to what you really want to know. So in this case, when you have somebody who really understands you, who is on the same lane with you, when you ask, they can easily relate. Okay, so please have that. Mr. Justice is in the cohort 12 grade. Please, if you have any, any problem at all, you could tap him. Mr. Wim is there too. I have introduced us to um, all these people. If you have any questions, you could tap any of us, and then you will atten attend to you, or you could inbox them. They're always there to help you. They've been through the process too, so they know how it is. So when you ask them questions, they can really easily relate to you. Okay, so please, I hope that makes sense. And thank you again, Mr. Justice. So, somebody is raising up their hands. Buma, please ask a question. Buma? You might want to unmute yourself. This is the button to unmute yourself. Maybe you might be showing Okay, good evening. How are you? Can you, hold, can you, can you hear me now? I can hear you very well. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, I've just joined in uh, very late um uh, probably uh, because of the timing but I, I have a question let me just go direct to the question yeah okay uh, earlier when i started off the program and uh, when i was i was um, creating uh, files especially in my repo i i don't know what happened it's either i deleted my the, the tmp file the temp file the, the temporal file so every time when there's a question or a project that need me to create uh, files or more directories into my temp file, I always find a, an error that says this file, this directory is no longer or it's it's not available or it's it doesn't exist every time the question that needs me to create a directory into the temp file. So how how can I how can I solve that? Okay, um, if I have seen the error message, I would have known really what to tell you. But but then, um, did you clone your repository? 
properly? I did. I did. I have cloned it properly. I have created um, even some more directories into it. But there's a question that now requires me to go and uh, create a script, right? Create a script that um, that creates a folder in a TMP directory or create another folder in a TMP directory. So this is the second time I'm, I'm facing the same issue. Which tax is that? Please? It's uh, it's shell basic uh, shell basic. Uh, let me just. It's it's um, shell basics task number number six. So I have so the, the check has run the check has run in the question through the question. Until the last two yeah. steps where it checks whether this the, the TMP file is has been created and that is also inside it there's another directory. Okay, okay. Um, hold on, I want to understand you. Now this is the task. It says create a script that creates a directory named this inside of this directory. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. So so um what command did you use? What did you write in your script? So in, in my script uh, there is, uh, there is uh, in my script. There is, of course, you have to start the line with the the, the shebang. Then I did wrote that uh, M, you create a directory M, mkdir, okay. mk mkdir stroke tmp stroke the name of the of the other the other directory that I need to create. So okay. when I begin to execute now, when I leave the when when I leave the when I leave the the BI, when I try to execute, it executes properly, but now run, try to run the file again. It tells me that this directory or the file is not, is, 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 does not, it, it's not a file or it's not a directory, what you are trying to create. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm just Okay. Uh, I'm supposed to create something, something. What was the name? Uh, I can't find. So, uh, please, in, you know what? You know what? Send me the yeah. error message on WhatsApp, then I will attend to you personally. Okay, that's okay. Okay, okay. So that I will, I will really understand um, the, what you are um, trying. Because now it's like just like I'm not really understanding. So just okay. send me to, uh, the, the error message on WhatsApp, and then I will attend to you. Okay. Your WhatsApp is David. Yeah, David. I am the admin of... Which group are you? Cohort 12, yeah? Cohort 12, okay. My number ends with 0792. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. No problem. You're welcome. So do we have any other issues? Any other problems at all? It could be from... Your cloning, your pushing, your pulling, whatever problem it is. If you have an, if you have a problem, please feel free to ask. Okay, so everybody's okay. All right, all right. So I, I believe we've covered um, the shell basics and the shell permissions and what we should know. The only thing I have not talked about here is GitHub, which I believe we we have passed through the processes and we know how to create a repository. Um, now I want to I want to tell, um, also tell us something. Now some of us, whenever you are trying to push it, ask you of your password. Your password is your token. Yes. Now the way you paste your token is Control A V. It's not show on the screen, so just paste it and hit Enter. You need to move on. Now the thing is, why is it asking you for your password every time you want to push? This is because when you created your when you clone your repository, you did not um, do identity updates before trying to push the first file. That was why you were having that issue. So whenever you create a repository, whenever you clone a repository, the first thing you want to do is to um, do identity updates before trying to do any other thing. And then how do you do identity update? Please, only your username should be in quotes. Your email should not be in quotes. That's the mistake some of us are making. Your email should not be in quotes. Only your username should be in quotes. And then when you are creating a token, um, use the classic, don't use the fine grain. Yeah, use the classic. Now, when you use the classic, don't set expiring dates. Use no expiring date so that you won't need to create it again. 
sometimes most of you you use a few days and then it's expired i uh, still trying to use it it's giving you error messages and you can't pass pass that particular session you have to go and create another one which is like a long process so just create um a token and just keep it throughout your ILX program maybe after then you can terminate it that is what i did i created the first one i used fine grain because i was trying to explore different options and then fine grain had expired the 30 days that was expired i had to create another one is the class and then i said it's no expiring date and i'm still using it now so always be careful follow the instructions don't do it like okay i know it and you don't follow instructions follow the instructions step by step so you won't miss anything that's why some of you are having errors please a piece is low already so gigali please wanted to ask a question please so we can close up that should be the last question i'm taking um, okay, thank you. So I wanted to ask, but I think you actually answered. So I, was, I created a file grain um, access token, but then I wanted to know, like, uh, mine expires in a year. So can can I still change to a classic? Like, what are the implications of me just, like, switching to a classic now, even though the file, uh, the, the fine grain one hasn't expired? Okay, okay. Um, fine grain is okay. It's very, very practical. But... Since you said you use a year, then it's it's okay. You can continue using. I can just leave it. But, okay. Yeah, it's good. But I, I don't know if it will actually take you for a year. It could expire after a, a, a month or two. Let's just see how it goes. But if it does, then you can switch over to the classic. The fine grain is still under um under review. It's, it's still in the better version of it. So it's not yet like it works well. That's why it has expiring date. But the classic is what is um authorized. Okay. okay? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we are good now. Nobody has the questions. Everything is good. We can end the meeting now. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. And please, I want to say again, if you have questions, inbox me or you ask in the group and tag me or any of seniors to the groups. Only cohort 12 group has seniors. The other is to uh, this group, cohort 12, and then the other, we have three cover 12 groups we don't have seniors there so i'll add, I'll add for some seniors there so please feel free to ask a question don't be shy or anything don't be scared it is one of the um attributes you should have as, as a software engineer to ask questions and know how to ask a question i will teach us how to ask questions next time we meet not just meeting somebody and say what is this that's how you ask questions maybe next time or if you're still interested to maybe you're eager to know you can inbox me and ask how do we ask questions then i will, I will tell you what till next time I will tell everybody. All right. So thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Mr. Justice, for being here to record our meet. We appreciate it a lot. So please, everybody, unmute your mic and say thank you to uh, one of our media persons who is here today to record our meet, Mr. Justice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Justice. You're all welcome. We can hear you. All right. Good night, everybody, and bye.